Today we will be comparing the use of two captive bolt guns, also known as captive bolt pistols, and learning how to kill a fish humanely. First, we will be examining the Zephyr F by Bach. This bolt gun is powered by compressed gas. I recommend either compressed nitrogen or ambient air. My operating pressure today is 145 PSI. This bolt gun is an automatic reloading gun and you can see how quickly it can discharge. The plastic bolt end with the arrow or mushroom head is also noteworthy. This shape and performance will later come up when we're comparing pistols. This is an unguarded plastic spring-loaded trigger and here is the air release valve which also has a plastic cap. In this demonstration, I'm setting the safety lever to the back or down safe position. You can see that when the trigger is depressed on the captive bolt pistol, it cannot discharge. To fire the bolt, the safety lever must be moved to the forward or up firing position. Now, I will show you how to properly disconnect the bolt gun from the high pressure hose. First, I'll turn off the gas at the tank and then I will release the air pressure by pressing the air release valve. Now we will be discussing the Jarvis HBS-1 captive bolt pistol. Like the previous gun, we will also be using 145 PSI of gas pressure. This captive bolt gun requires the operator to manually reset the bolt head before each use. To operate this captive bolt gun, the operator must first reset the piston to the back position and then press and hold the dead man switch while applying gas in order to fire the bolt. If the safety is released while the captive bolt gun is in the ready position, the gas will quickly discharge and the piston will be unable to fire. Disconnect the HPS-1 Captain Bolt pistol. Again, I closed off the gas at the tank, and to release the gas pressure in the bolt gun and hose, I depressed the dead man switch to relieve pressure. Before demonstrating the use of the two captive bolt guns on salmon, let's compare the two side by side. The Zephyr F is significantly lighter and has more plastic components, including a mushroom-shaped bolt. It is self-cocking and has an adapter to help guide or restrain the fish. In the other hand, the Jarvis HPS-1 is made entirely of stainless steel, making it significantly heavier. The bolt head is also stainless steel and has a 1-inch diameter flattened head. The HPS-1 also has a trigger guard and requires manual resetting of the piston to discharge the bolt. Looking at the rear of the guns, the Jarvis HPS-1 comes with the Schrader valve to manually monitor gas pressure, which in this case was removed as a regulator was being used, and I replaced the valve with the brass plug. It is important to note that these are Pacific Chinook salmon, also known as king salmon, that are completing their life cycle at the fish hatchery. They have returned to spawn and will soon die. Let's take a moment to review the location of the brain in the salmon's head. The brain can be found between the crown and the eyes and is centrally located. Ensuring good animal welfare starts with properly trained staff. Knowing the correct location of the fish brain to instantly render the fish brain dead with a single strike, whether using a club or a captive bolt gun, is crucial. The video we are currently viewing shows a fish biologist using the Zephyr F for the first time. One feature that stands out is the ease of use with the help of an adapter. This allows the biologist to restrain and steady the fish against a hard surface, which is necessary for directing the full force of the bolt energy directly into the head of the fish. It is important to note that this process is not optimized and is being used as a test to compare the effectiveness of manual percussion stunning with the club 
to the use of a captive bolt pistol. One of the negative aspects I quickly see with using the adapter is that you cannot visually confirm the placement of the bolt to ensure that the fish are being struck optimally. A number of these strikes are off-center, which required additional manual strikes in the chute and later on the spawning table. Examining fish after being struck by the Zephyr F, there were a number of cuts on the crown of the fish, suggesting that the strike wasn't centered and actually moved along the head of the salmon. When using the Jarvis HPS-1, it is clear that it presents a significant challenge for an inexperienced operator. It is a steeper learning curve compared to the Zephyr F. Additionally, the HPS-1 slows down the inexperienced operator as they are more deliberate in trying to achieve optimal placement for an accurate, single effective strike. You can see in the video how the two biologists start working together to adjust the head for optimal bolt placement in the chute. I recommend that the individual holding the captive bolt gun also restrains the head of the fish while the other biologist holds the tail. This operating procedure reduces the likelihood of accidental injury to the holder in the event that the fish moves. An experienced operator can more quickly chamber the gun either by using the offhand or by leveraging infrastructure such as a solid block or a hole, such as in a PVC pipe, to reset the piston. This allows the offhand to be free to restrain the head or hold the tail of the fish. There are certainly advantages to the Zephyr F over the HPS-1, as it is lighter, easier to use for the inexperienced fish biologist, and it can be more easily be employed by a single user with the assistance of the adapter. However, it also has its negatives such as the inability to visualize the striking surface. Another negative is the lack of a trigger guard and the plastic trigger that can be broken as inevitably equipment gets dropped or set down vigorously. The HPS-1 with its stainless steel flattened bolt head delivered a more effective single strike stun. I suspect that if the plastic bolt of the Zephyr was flattened, it would likely have delivered a better stun. A single strike versus multiple strikes will likely extend the life of the tool's seals. The HPS-1 required the user to be more exacting with the bolt's placement, reducing the need for subsequent strikes later in the spawning process, ultimately increasing fish welfare. One more note is that for a very large fish, the HPS-1 can be operated at pressures exceeding 225 PSI, compared to the maximum operating pressure of 165 PSI for the Zephyr F. For smaller bony fish, the Zephyr F should be an effective tool. For people like myself who work with large fish, such as salmon and cartilaginous sturgeon fish, the Jarvis HPS-1 is likely the best choice for a manual captive bolt pistol. Thanks for watching. I'm Dr. Jackson Gross.